Hi guys and gals, Shane Stevenson, Director of Museum Collections and Curator here at the Buffalo Naval Park. For today's video, I'm down on the third deck on USS Little Rock in the Primary Engineering Office. Uh, to my knowledge, or to my best guesstimate, this holds about five to 7,000 blueprints uh, that were inherent to CLG4 and also uh, CL92. I have a, a small dedicated group of volunteers that have been helping me go through these and adding a description outside the folder uh, for what is the blueprint on the inside. Unfortunately, I've yet to come across a key for one set of numbers which I will talk about. So this is a way of organizing and gaining intellectual control over this collection here by saying, I now know what we have in the blueprint collection on board USS Little Rock. Uh, concurrently, I am working with a volunteer for the blueprints that we have on USS the Sullivans as well that are uh, thankfully did not get touched uh, during the capsizing uh, and he is he is going through those and doing very similar work for the Sullivan's blueprints. So I'll show you an example of what I'm talking about. These blueprints can be broken at least from what I've seen right now are into three different areas. They're labeled CL55, they're labeled CLG3, or they're labeled CLG4. CL55 would have been an original blueprint probably made in 1940, early 41 for the Cleveland class cruisers themselves. All right, and CL55, USS Cleveland, uh, the first of that class. We also have ones that say CLG3, which is the USS Galveston, which was the first of her class. Uh, for the three ships of the of the Talos missile uh, guided missile system. So those would have been blueprints that then would have got cut across all ships of a class. And then we also have one specifically to uh, the USS Little Rock. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So each of these folders, or many of them, have just a very basic listing of CLG4. So here you go here. It doesn't say CL55 or CLG3. So this blueprint could have been very specific to just the USS Little Rock. Now you'll see the number in the corner here, 1749956. Aha! That does match right here the blueprint that's in it, 1749956. No problem there. One folder, one blueprint, it matches. What my concern is, are these numbers in the right corner. All right, there, there. So you'll see again, they all have numbers in the left corner that correspond with the blueprint that's in them. What I'm concerned about is that this number was an internal system an internal key or index system uh, for the blueprints and I don't have that at least as of right now I have not found that key so by just adding the title on the outside of the folder this allows us to build uh, build a picture of beginning to group these numbers is it is it s2 and then within that it's 803 or is it S2 and 901? So you'll see that there's some order to them a little bit, S3003. So is it a series and then it's a group? This would be like the group number, S3, and then this is the file number within that group number? I don't know yet. So I don't want to belabor the point, but that's this is going to be really helpful uh, by at least getting the titles on the outside. So we can again build a build a picture. What I want to do is show one of CL55 class. All right, here's the title of this particular 
uh, blueprint. The blueprint was made at the New York Shipbuilding Corporation. I just talked about them last night uh, because that's what this is the shipyard that converted the USS Little Rock. I'm going to try and get a little more light here. And very awesomely, it lists many of the Cleveland class cruisers that were constructed using this blueprint. But wait a second. Cramp Shipbuilding Company, USS Miami, USS Wilkes Bear, USS Oklahoma City, USS Little Rock, Galveston, and Youngstown. Okay, that's correct. That is not, that's correct, that's correct, that's correct, and that is correct. So what is going on here with CL-90? It says USS Wilkes-Barre, and that's why I pulled it out as an example, because, uh-uh-uh, USS Astoria. USS Wilkes-Barre ended up being constructed at said New York Shipbuilding Corporation as CL-103, not 90. The USS Astoria was CL-90. The Galveston was almost completed, uh, and then she was just put in reserve uh, due, to the, due to the ending of the war, and Youngstown was never constructed at all. And there's the USS Little Rock, CL-92. So what is the deal here? This could have just been something as very simple as they just changed the name, and... Uh, just slap the Astoria on the, the nameplate on the back and call it a day. But for what ended up being the Astoria, that took, I have my little notes here, that took 32 months to complete. Where, with USS, the true USS Wilkes Bear CL 103 in New York, New York Shipbuilding Corp., it took 19 months. So 32 months, months seems extraordinary long, uh, even for Cramp Shipbuilding, who is known as being a little late to the party. All right, as you can imagine in the Philadelphia Northeast Corridor there, uh, there are a lot of shipyard firms. Cramp was one of those that it had a really long history, but it closed uh, during World War, uh, closed during the Depression. Uh, and by the time they brought it back up to speed, their workforce wouldn't have been considered expert shipbuilders. So they needed that time to bring everyone up to speed, because by that time, everyone who could build a ship or work in a shipyard or a dockyard was already working at another uh, company or a Navy shipyard. So it took them a while to bring their workforce up to expertise. As an example, USS Little Rock, constructed after Astoria, only took, thankfully, 27 months. So they had shaved off five months. But for to have a ship being constructed for 32 months does seem extraordinarily long. So I'm wondering if it just wasn't the nameplate changing it from Wilkes-Barre to Astoria. I'm wondering if they had to stop production uh, during the shipbuilding process for that ship specifically. Uh, maybe they got another contract to build submarines. We know that they were building submarines too. So maybe they put the Astoria on hiatus for a little bit. Uh, the information that I have found, I cannot find the reason why. Uh, but that doesn't mean it's not out there. All right, so New York shipbuilding was known as a really great cruiser uh, shipbuilding company. All right, and let's see. So as an example, there's the Cleveland, there's the uh, Columbia, Montpelier, Montpelier, uh, Denver, Santa Fe, and then of course they were going to take over, there it is right there, CL-103 which turned into the Wilkes-Barre at the New York Shipbuilding Corporation. So they were going to build an extra 8 or 12, um, extra 12 uh, light cruisers, Cleveland-class cruisers. 
So it's this is a way of, you know, if you find an original blueprint like this, this is really, it gives a nice glimpse into what was technically planned to happen, but then actually did not happen. New York Shipbuilding and Four River were known as great cruiser uh, constructors because of their specialization during the interwar period. Right? They, along with Newport News, Four River, and New York Shipbuilding, uh, built a cartel together, and so they funneled cruiser work to Four River and New York Ship, while Newport News focused on aircraft carriers. So the reason that they were able, and between Four River and New York Shipbuilding, they constructed, I think, 33 cruisers for World War II. In addition to, they did a lot of landing craft. Uh, I think New York Ship constructed over 100 or about 100 landing craft tanks, LCTs, uh, for World War II. But their specialization living on the back of that cartelization during the interwar period made them specialists in light cruiser construction. So again, having blueprints like this here, which would be original uh, to uh, pre-war or early war, kind of shows, now here's the baton, right? So they list all of the ones that were converted, not into Cleveland classes, but were then taken and made aircraft carriers. So the Bataan was originally scheduled to be the USS Buffalo, as I've talked about before. So again, these records give really cool insight into uh, what is planned and then being adaptable and organic and being able to uh, change with the times, you can maybe see those changes. All right, so this plan was uh, drawn in 1940, so obviously a lot had changed since that time. Well, I hope you enjoy this video, um, and if you are in town and you'd like to volunteer, come on down and, to the third deck and help uh, at least give a description on the outside of the folder to what's on the inside. Uh, that would be really appreciated. And then again, hopefully to then begin building an index uh, more easily than just going through them individually. So, thanks so much. Ring the bell, subscribe, leave a comment, leave a question, leave a statement. And we will see you again soon. Thank you very much.